Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. Um, this tutorial is about the synchronized keyword used with a static block. Well, we're used with a block basically, but specifically invoking a static method. But anyway, all right, I'm going to go and open up my website to uh, my browser, my website, javacjava.com. Select so begin. I'm going to scroll down here to the sta synchronized static block tutorial. So this tutorial is a companion to my synchronized static method tutorial and will demonstrate applying the synchronized keyword to a code block to make our static method thread safe. You will need to watch the other tutorial prior to this one in order to follow along. I'll basically be giving the abridged explanation. So let's go ahead and come down here, highlight the source code, control C to copy. Let's move the browser off screen, open up the command prompt, type in cd space backslash mb java, cd java, make a directory here, and I'm just gonna call this one synchronous. If I could spell synchronized static block, and let's change directories to that, and let's notepad static block.java. Synchronized static block.java will be the name of my source code file. All right, let's do Control V to paste here. Okay, so pretty much uh, the exact same source code as we started out with the, the previous tutorial there on the static methods, synchronized static methods there. So um, before, all we were able to do to fix, well, let's go ahead and just compile and start up with our issue right over again, just as a quick refresher here, Java C. <clears throat> and let's run it here, right, and Okay, first time we actually got lucky, there weren't any issues. Well, there must have been some issues there because we didn't, the, the array list was shorter there. Anyway, so we've got these null values in here, right? I hit the up arrow, right? And we'll run into just all kinds of problems there. Boom, boom, boom. You know, you saw the other tutorial there. All right, so the issue is, is that this particular, well, actually, let's, let's talk about a separate issue. Let's say, for example, the static list, this particular class, let's say, for example, we were just like, um, importing that, right? Like we didn't have access to this particular class or, you know, and so on and so forth there, right? To, to modify these. Let's just pretend that's the, imagine that's the case there. So how can we get around the limitations of these not being synchronized um, without modifying this class, right? So we're gonna leave this class intact and modify our code, right, to, to do that. Well, what we can do down here is because we're going to be statically invoking the add to list method because it's a static method there, right? We're not going to be creating an object out of it. What we do is we create a synchronized statement. Synchronized, and then we've got uh, like I think of it as like a parameter for the synchronized statement there. But what we're going to put into the parameters, if we we're going to create an object, we normally put the object name in here. But um, basically, if um, you know you think about it there when you're when you are invoking a static method, you're invoking that directly on the class without creating a new object. So the way that works is you just simply put in static list.class, okay? Now don't worry about why that class is there, you know, I'm not entirely sure either. I think it's just they, something they did for the syntax or whatnot on that. But anyway, let's go ahead and come up here and save this, right? So now what we've told this is that basically this is just doing the same thing, right? We're saying this add to list class basically is, is the whole entire thing is synchronized. So anything that tries to invoke it or whatnot there will, um, you know, it's part of a number thread. It will basically like do an intrinsic lock or whatnot on that and this particular method there as well. So let's go ahead and come up here and save this and let's clear our screen. Let's recompile and let's rerun. Okay, so now we don't have any null issues there, right? Can boom, 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 boom. Matter of fact, we don't have any issues at all. Till we get down to the display list, right? 
Okay, so the display list there, of course, is is um, up here in this particular class doesn't have any sort of it's not checking for any in, intrinsic locks or any monitor locks like this class is now and specifically you know when invoking this particular method the add to list method here so we can come up here and fix this in the exact same way right by putting and closing this particular uh, method invocation in a synchronized statement okay all right let's go ahead and save this let's clear our screen up here or let's recompile then clear our screen and then we'll just go ahead and rerun that okay so we can run that okay and you see we still have the same problem as uh, in the previous video there where we're doing the static methods there but we're not going to oops now I just recompiled that <clears throat> We're not going to get that error there with the concurrent issue. Okay. All right. Then, of course, we can fix this particular issue by simply putting back in our while statement right up top here, right? Our while loop. So while uh, thread.active count is greater than one, because one being our main thread, that's all we want left before we actually do the display list here, we can fix that issue right there, right? All right, let's go ahead and Java, Java C to compile this. And let's clear our screen. Hit the up arrow and then enter, right? Go crazy on this here and see if we can get it to do any, anything strange. Oh, okay. Here we go, like active thread 60. So you can see we've got a lot of stuff out of order here for sure. Um, but you can see it, it, we still displayed the whole entire thing there because we were all, all good to go. So anyway, the, the primary purpose of this tutorial, exactly like the last one, but just pretend like you don't have access to this particular class or its methods to make them synchronized. This is how you can then make your own code, code um, basically thread safe um, without accessing the original class and the original methods as well, okay? So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this off screen and get that off screen. And I don't really have any final thoughts on this one here um, that uh, we'll be demonstrating basically the synchronized keyword with instance methods in my next tutorial. So anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.